Hi, my name is Marcio. I'm a solutions engineer for GitHub. Today, we're going to continue the series of some SSO guides for enterprise organizations. In my role, there is another question that I often ask, and this question is how actually does some SSO impacts the users that are logging into my organization once it has been enabled? So how does, how does that work? What, what changes, right? So during this video, we are going to go through how SAML works, how does direct impact users, and also how does some SSO at GitHub differs from implementations from other vendors out there. Let's get started. Before we go any further, I just would like to highlight three prerequisites. So first, this guide is intended for the GitHub Enterprise Cloud Platform. So here we're talking about non-enterprise managed users. You need to have a some SSO enabled on a, an organization or enforced in the enterprise account. So we can, can go ahead with that. And also we have to need your user account linked already to an identity provider on that organization or that enterprise account. We'll be discussing how to access resources within an organization or enterprise account that's protected by some SSO. Users that have linked their personal GitHub account to a some SSO protected organization or enterprise will have a different login experience. Users who are trying to access resources within this organization or enterprise account, they will have additional prompts and they're going to be asked to be logged in against GitHub and also against the identity provider related to that organization or enterprise account. An important point to highlight here is that often session expiration times differ from GitHub and the identity provider. So it might not be often that the user will need really to log in against GitHub and against the identity provider at the same time. Let's take a look on a more practical example. So let's take a user account at GitHub, which has private repositories that are stored under that user account. This user also has like a public repository, which was forked from the open source community. And this user wants to contribute back to open source community, which is great. So all of this is stored under the user account. Now, let's say this user is invited to join this organization at GitHub. And this user is going to receive permissions on admission to access those repositories, pull requests, and issues within that organization. That will depend on how the organization administrator is going to define those permissions. When some SSO is enforced, access is limited to only authorized users. That means that users must have their identity provider identity linked to their GitHub user account. If a user is part of organization and is not in your identity provider, this user is an outside collaborator. For this user, your organization administrator can define specific roles and access per repository. Some SSO at GitHub is intended to give you access to your organization resources, not your user account. On my right side, I have an organization that has some SSO enabled. However, I haven't logged in. I have access to their public repositories. While on my left side, I have login with a user account that has access to these organization resources. So I can see the public repositories, but on top of that, the private and internal ones. And how about login experience? So how does that really look like? So I'm going here to try to access repositories inside an organization. So let me go ahead and press enter. The first thing that's going to happen, I'm going to be showing these public repositories in that organization. If I wanted to access private resources, I will have to first sign in against GitHub. If any 2FA is in place, I will have to go ahead and approve this request on my 2FA application. Right after, I have to sign in against my identity provider. Once that's done, I will be able to access private and internal resources inside that organization. Thanks for watching this video. See you in the next one.